when you went back, you saw the space, ne? Yeah. So this the space itself is a triangle with these two with these two big pillars. You see them? Which pillars? You this know? one, this pillar here, and this okay. pillar here. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So in a, it's an intervention into the space. So the exhibition is not just this these two walls. It's also the stuff that you don't see. That's that's great. That's great. And then it's also part of the idea of when you come in, it's an uncomfortable space. It's like your body is just awkward. You're like, okay, so this is it. What's missing? Mm -hmm. Ah. So so this this physical reaction of the work like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were relaxed when you came in or did you have this? Yeah. <laughs> it actually what you're saying it reminds me of the of the um, I was talking to someone yesterday about the how now the how architecture is sort of devoid of life. It's it, it's it's based on on, on, on building, it's based on the wall, it's based on the shelter, but the, I, the, it's devoid of life, it's devoid of inspiration. That's why we have to move our finishes in, our uh, painting, hanging in the painting to make the life to out of it. it. Yeah. 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 And I, when I fell in, I just felt that presence of the wall. And I was actually looking at the wall where I was uh, at my place without st any aesthetics on it or flowers, or furniture, how it is. Mm -hmm. And when I, I start to really think of the idea of architecture. But now, of course, with the new architects, I'm sort of trying to think of, uh, of, uh, of people. Because like with cinema or with art, we don't necessarily think. They, they, they think of people. They think of the audience. But with, uh, with architecture, they think of the logic, logistics, the technical aspect of, of it. Oh, yeah. But it's devoid of people. But it's about people at the same time, you know. So this is the same feeling when I got when I came here, because I was looking at the wall at my house last night, actually. Exactly that that sense of of like seeing the wall and also a little bit being claustrophobic. Yeah. And then it's just and then it also gives you a space to to confront the three words with the with the dots and it's a bit it's a bit weird Jorge. this is happening in ukraine times because it was conceptualized it came up before, before. <laughs> <laughs> it came up before ukraine <laughs> uh, uh, so now when you read it it's it's within the context of the ukraine but it's also bigger than Ukraine. It's it's also like history unfolding and encompassing your own personal history as well. Or like for example, I I was listening to somebody and it's it's Johnny Guantu and one of the Ngomas was saying, Your ancestors are a historical fact. Mm -hmm. And and I was already thinking about this work and I'm like, yeah, that's kinda where I'm thinking of Jorge our personal histories are also a historical fact. But when we think of history, we don't think of personal history. Mm -hmm. We think of like, not even global history, we think of written history, because written history is not necessarily global history. It's Western history. And a lot of my work is about who, who is present in the history books and who is not present in the history books and why are they not present and how are they being erased or in if they're written how they're being erased in how they are written mm -hmm. so all those things and then i think this becomes a way to kind of see where your mind takes you as an audience if you're thinking of history Mm -hmm. and history unfolding. Yeah, and so what you talk about, about like that, I, I, I was talking to someone also, he's, he's a theater curator, and he's planning to have a show in Berlin, but now with the, um, with the Ukraine situation, he's trying to now reshovel it and see which angle to make it relevant. 
And then I said to him, no, I don't think, uh, yeah, I think it's beautiful to think that, that way. But I, I, I feel like the artist will mirror it without even wanting to. Or and it, there's to always this, I find that the, there's so much authenticity that comes with not trying to be relevant or to take a box or to make something that it's part of the national dialogue. I think it's, it's because you're a black person, you understand. It's like coming from the margins for me. It's like yes. I'm being taught or having to teach yourself, even though you're in the margins, you're relevant. Mm -hmm. the, um, the, the main spaces are like, oh, you have to be relevant. Oh, you have to be this. Oh, you're not yeah. white enough. You're not this yeah. enough. You're not yeah. that enough. And then you've had to learn to be like, no, I'm enough. I am here. It's relevant. My experiences are enough. Yeah. So I think people who are mostly in the center have a different relationship. And I think there's strength in being in the margins. Yeah. I think even the idea of, of, of um, almost becoming a vessel of ideas, becoming true to ideas, becoming faithful to ideas or sort of inspiration, I think you, it will anchor you, it will center you, it will make you relevant, your work will be relevant. Without even coming from dispossessed areas or places or marginalized groups, but just as truthful to the ideas. Yeah, what I hear you saying, which is what I think I try to do, is just being true to who you are. Yeah. I, because we are all relevant, we are all the center, we are all uh, important, we are all worthy of being here. Yeah. Can you say a little bit about what you said about the history a little bit? In okay. terms of the work that, that you're actually showing here. Um, so I think this connects to a broader conversation that I'm having with myself a lot mm -hmm. about history and or mainly historical erasure. Gahun, I'm interested in who gets, what is it that we consider history and who gets written into history and who gets written out of history and how one gets written out of history. So my favorite example is I read a, I read a book by Yvette Abrams called The Long National Insult and it talks about um, Sarah Badman. And what she says is that Sarah Badman was an enslaved woman who was taken to Europe. Before that, a lot of people, Wikipedia, South African History Online, say, kind of suggest the idea that Sarah Badman willingly went to Europe or was somehow coerced into uh, in going to Europe. So what she explains is that historically, it's all laid out. Jorge, she was a, a, um, an indigenous woman in a precarious situation. Her relationship with um, the, the white men around her and the men who took her to Europe is um, is very like dominant, like that of somebody who who has ownership, and that if and also she talks about how people in precarious situations don't just decide to move. If you don't know what the future holds, you don't you're not likely to be adventurous. I think I'm going off the tracks. But what she does say is that if you say she went to Europe willingly or in search of a fortune, you make her an accomplice into her own demise. Mm -hmm. But if you, if, you, if you say that she was an enslaved woman who was taken to Europe, mm -hmm. then you make visible the moments, the, the, you make visible her life of agency. You make visible all the times when she was, she was taking ownership of her life and she was, you know, being resistant. That's mm -hmm. the word mm -hmm. that I'm looking for. So those are the things that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Or like um, 
ever Kotoa. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know who Kotoa is. No, tell me about it. She's, um, when Jan van der Riebeck arrived in South Africa, she's, she's written into his diary. I think she's not even written into his diary. She's, she's seen as like one of the first translators between the Khoi and, and the San. Mm -hmm. So also I'm interested in how what we know about her comes from Jan van Riebeck's diary and comes from like the Dutch's perspective. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a form of erasure. Mm -hmm. and, and again, Yvette Abrams did this thing where she was like looking at the gaps within Jan van Riebeck's diary, but looking at them from Kotoa's point of view mm -hmm. and from the point of view of the San. Or just like those different sorts of things or how in in Southern Africa, when the enslaved people would run away, uh, they would say they're lazy, they don't want to work. Mm -hmm. But that's not being lazy or not wanting to work, that's resisting. Mm -hmm. um, so that becomes historically how subjectivities are being erased, mm -hmm. how modes of resistance are being erased but erased out of history mm -hmm. by being written into history mm -hmm. as laziness. So that's what I'm interested in. And I'm also interested in how, when we talk about history or the history books, how for now, when I think of history books, I think of black subject subjectivity and black resistance being erased out of those spaces mm -hmm. or being neglected or not being written in mm -hmm. it. And I'm also interested in what does it, what does an experience and an idea of history mean within an African um, context? Mm -hmm. If you think about the past, the present, and the future, I read it was in uh, a general history of Africa in one of the UNESCO books. I remember a little antidote where the the writer was talking about how I'm forgetting which continent which country it is. Just say Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm forgetting which country. <laughs> and he says that the people were very good archers and the the king dreamt of the white people coming into the ocean and he he put a banana leaf on the arrow before mm -hmm. he let it fly and he understood that as being kind to them and when the white people arrived the the army wasn't as forceful as it would have been because of okay. that because of that dream and and the writer was also trying to do an example about how within that context the past is present and that the past influences the future mm -hmm. and and also they were talking a bit about ancestors that you with within african religion and spirituality you're always consulting the ancestors mm -hmm. and how then they are the past but they're not just stuck with in the past, they are in the present as well, and are influencing the future. So, still reading about it, yeah, yeah. but it, yeah. it has this thing yeah. of, and also as opposed to how the West thinks about it, I think, which is like the past is in the past and it's static and it has to be authentic. You mm -hmm. have to build the home built time in an authentic way. Mm -hmm. It like, as opposed to the Mali um, mosque that you know every year people come and they they build they build they it build they put them yeah. Up. yeah and then it yeah yeah it's it's funny you're talking about the um like the idea of who wrote the history and for who and uh from which um from which lands um i was thinking about the 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 Western European 
production uh, of knowledge production canon it's 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 faulty at its core in regard to in, in indigenous uh, people um, like especially when it comes to uh, um, infographic uh, narrative I was reading about uh, Conrad I read this book a couple of years ago and I didn't think it was racist. For some reason I just didn't think so. <laughs> I didn't think it was bad. Were you 12? <laughs> yeah, because I was, I was still young and also I was interested in, in the character. That's the thing with, the, with, with us as black people that we can actually um, project ourselves in other persons. That we have this almost like a ability to, to watch a white film and still relate to the character. Other than that, because uh, many other way around it's not possible. They see them as a black characters, but they're not necessarily can be in their shoes, you know. So, yeah. so with this, and I was thinking so of this. So I hear you saying we can see the humanity of a person, and we can see the human experience. Absolutely. Beyond. Beyond the color of the person, yeah. or where the person comes from, and I was looking at the uh, this there's this line of Conrad where this, 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 they're sailing down this Congo River and then he sees the savage. He's like, I see the savage. I see this man. He's shouting, he's cursing us or he's praying to the gods or maybe he's shouting at us. We don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so pointing though. And then he, he's like, it is so bizarre like how you painted this person who could be pretty much welcoming them. But his idea of him as savage, man, it's almost like he's praying to the ancestors. Oh, he's cursing them. Yeah. Whatever he's saying, it's just, it's just terrifying. And, 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 and this, this whole building that used to be gods in the back in, in their heydays. And, and I was just thinking about how you can reduce a person, deprive him or, 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 or deprive the person of his character. It's like how we see the animals. We always say, oh, that's cute. But they all have characters. They all have the different eyesights, the, the, the different color of their eyes, or how they move, how they do things. It's almost like we are reduced to totally um, uh, um, ants in that way. And I always feel like because of, uh, of, 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 the, of, the, 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 of the European canon that was able to, to document this in the, in, in, in the, in the, and distribute the, this production in a, in a global scale, it almost like they never got to even get to live with those people. They never got to see them as almost people who are different. Like there's this monolithic eye view of seeing the world. Yeah. And now I started to read about a lot about this history books that I, 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 I thought I liked them when I was a kid. And then now I realized, wow, this was bizarre. This was, <laughs> you know. You're making me so, think of, um, it's, it's Alice Walker, you know, the, when Silly leaves the husband, she says, she says, what's that line? What you think of doing to me has already been done to you. Something like that. Oh, that's strong. Yeah. She's like yeah. that. In, well, it's, it's Whoopi Goldberg doing. Anyway. This is a, the first film screening in history. Right. This, when that happened, people ran out of the theater. Wow. Because they thought. <laughs> so when, when the train came towards the screen like that, they thought the train, they thought it was a real train coming <clears throat> at them. So yeah. the whole theater ran out. That's amazing. Because so this idea of like being, oh, planes, white people will do that too, as well. It's yeah. like when you see, but I hear what you're saying. The second one is this. Um, I was reading like Water for Spirit, uh, my team, oh, I forget his name. He has, he has a clip in his book where he says that he's, a, he's an Ngoma. Mm -hmm. who's gone through initiation and he says that he bought back a cassette of Star Trek to his village. Did I tell you about yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he bought back a cassette of tra Star Trek to his village and he showed it to the elders and, and he was, in his language, there's no, I think there's, there's nothing for, there's no word for imagination, like something mm -hmm. like it's, 
made-up story. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't know how to tell the elders this is a made-up story because the elders saw Star Trek with uh, warp speed mm-hmm. and and certain <clears throat> types of aliens, and they were like, "Yeah, we know this. This is true." Yeah. And he was like, yeah. "No, no, no. This one is made up." They mm-hmm. were like, "No, it's it's true. Yeah. We wouldn't have depicted it in this way, mm-hmm. but." Because they had, they were in Gomas and they had dealt with the spirit realm, and also like if the Zulu, when the Zulus say, "We are, we are of the star from the yeah. stars," it's also true because we are all stardust. Yeah, yeah. You hear it in so there yeah. is, there is like an amount of truth in in all of that. So the pyramids are built in such a way that they they reflect the cosmology in a way that modern science is only now, or astrology is only now beginning to understand. White people were so, were so amazed that black people knew this, they even said the pyramids were built by aliens. Yeah. They could not have been built by black people. Absolutely. The same way that Great Zimbabwe yeah. could not have been built by black people, it must have been built by uh, white Sheba, when she came through and this guy went around destroying evidence because yeah. he was looking for yeah. evidence that some white person built uh, Great Zimbabwe. What you said was very interesting about the, uh, how this, um, uh, 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 the clan leader said, no, they didn't use the word imagination, but they used the word vision. No, I, I'm, I, for us, we use the word vision. Vision is almost like the imagery. Uh, but it's something to do that is inspired by something greater. You can have a vision in your dreams. You have visions. Yeah. And uh, I have this idea that... Okay, I tell you the story about... Um, when I was in Lesotho, I was researching about the cosmology. Re- now, recently. Yeah, recently. Um, uh, and, and then I, I had the story about, I'm actually having this as an opening sequence for my new work, um, where the shepherds, there will be like a six, seven shepherds uh, sitting in a hut. Um, so, so the shepherds, uh, depending on the season, they will go to the mountains and live with the cows mm-hmm. for like six months. And then... Um, when I think to winter time they come back to the village. So normally they will sleep in this hut, like seven of them or 10 or 12 of them, they sleep in the hut. There was this thing that uh, I think missionary wrote about it and some few other um, Basotho scholars who wrote this about this sort of phenomenon where the child or a shepherd will wake up in the middle of the night with his eyes closed and walk over other kids without interrupting, touching them in any way, and go outside, open the door, takes a pee at the crowd, and comes back and closes the door and sleeps without waking no one. And I was thinking about this, and I thought, maybe this is how they saw the stars. Like, you have uh, some of the people in, the, in Lesotho, they named their cows Jupiter. They even know that Jupiter has a small moons. We said to Osalem and Yenayon, or even the Iranian belt. Like, the, the, you, can, you can tell through the poems or through uh, even how they named their cows at that time. And then I was thinking about this knowledge as far as the imagination. And when you speak of the imagination, because what's fascinating, the imagination is not devoid of spirituality, or the vision is not devoid of, spir- of spirituality. Like, they're almost like the cosmos world, the cosmos world and the real world, they're only twine. They're similar to how we review or we see or we interact with the dead, the living dead, the ancestors. It's always like there is always this crisscrossing. The living are among the dead, the dead are among the living. It's always this crisscrossing that the world, it's not that separated. That's why when they saw the planes coming, they didn't first, they thought maybe there's something to do with gods because that's the world they live in, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, and besides that, there was something else that I thought about besides the planes. I was thinking about the story of Christ crucified. It sounds like Moshegana uh, Sankata, you know, the, 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 the boy who, um, there was this big snake that devoured everyone. I think maybe someone had a vision of the plague, uh, the coming plague or the coming white man. This was a dream that maybe some people are saying was from Manzo as a prophecy, 
mm-hmm. of the coming of the red dust or the coming of the of the big snake or the, the Khodumodum. I love that story. So Khodumodumo Walesoto is a big snake. It's a big snake. Ah, it's a big snake. I'm and looking then, and for that story. Sankata. Yeah, Mushenga Sankata goes inside and then he, with the spear, he goes and he kills it from inside. But he sort of sacrificed himself in, in the process. And I feel like the story of Christ, it must have been that mirrored in that way. We like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been too familiar with them this, as an idea of a martyr. <laughs> this book I was reading also said that because there's, there's this different explanations, but also one of the explanations where he was saying, one of the reasons why we accepted Christianity was that in, uh, in essence, the, the, the essence of what it was talking about was like, oh, yeah, it's things we know. It's like, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not foreign, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, it makes sense. If you're living six months under the stars, I mean, think about it. Think about this. And and you know, you know, the stars in Lesotho. Yeah. It's like it's a whole. It's the whole galaxy mm-hmm. in front of you. And every night, the fire in the galaxy is your, is your entertainment. Yeah. It it makes yeah. sense that, even besides the visions and, and the information you get from the elders, just as a as just, a, being there. Yeah, just yeah. as a small boy and being yeah. there and spending that much time under the stars, you're like, of course you would, you would know a lot. It like, it just, it makes, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes more sense. Yeah, absolutely. I've been, I've been thinking a lot about the return, the idea of the return. The return to the source. Oh, or seeing one of the things that I mean, I inspire now to, 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 to have in my work, to really tap deep into it, it's to the, what our identity as a collective black Africans I look like mm. without c- colonialism, without the history being distorted and the image what it looks like because it's so beyond our comprehension even to we think of this idea of of uh, that is Im- embedded in our culture of of cosmos and 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 and, and um, of, of something that is that people were could tap into the other world in such an easiness like now if you look at the sangomas they believe in they they, they they believe they go in the underworld or in, in the water. There's something to do with water that they can go inside and back and forth. And this idea, but of course, with a common person like me, it's not you know it's it's, it's impossible. It's it's almost I, I do be do believe in this. I mean, I come from the city, so I, witchcraft is pretty much <laughs> on, on, on your face. No, no, I'm going to tell you about the story. Okay. Yeah. So there's stuff that I know that I've seen, of course. Um, but I, I, and I was trying to look at this imagery, and it's very, it's beyond my comprehension. I need to think about why I was thinking about this. Um, I'm going to challenge you a little bit mm-hmm. because I, I've been thinking about that the idea of of us as a black people is imposed. We are not black people; we are people. Yes, that's true. And then the other one is, as the black people, who would we be without white people? It's like, it, for me, it doesn't matter because for us, it's like, it's, it's humanity. And humanity is constantly, we're con- it's not even, humanity is also a problematic word. Gabonne, the human is, is the white man and everyone else is like, trying to get to that space. Um, recently, I kind of like the idea of, I was, I was reading the Lakota way, and he talks about two-legged, the two-legged animal and the four-legged animal. It's, and what I like about that is like, for me, it brings us to the point where we are all like off the earth the same as the plants, the same as the ant, like we are off the earth and, 
and all living beings deserve a certain amount of mm -hmm. um, of, of respect. Mm -hmm. So in that term, I don't know how else to put it. There's also a quote from Tanahasi quote where he says that something like the question came, who is the Tolstoy of the Zulus? Mm -hmm. And his answer was Tolstoy is the Tolstoy of the Zulus, unless you want to separate humanity into groups. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, then Shaka Zulu is the Shaka Zulu of the Russians. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, how do I not kind of separate humanity into, into, into different groups? Mm. It's, not, it's not properly articulated yet because it feels like I'm trying to ignore mm -hmm. no, reality no. Yeah. and historical context and like what's happening. Mm. But I'm interested in how with, without the limitations that have been placed on us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who would we be and what would our imaginations be? For example, uh, one of my favorite quotes here, Toni Morrison, she says that racism is a distraction. It keeps you from doing your work. Somebody mm -hmm. says your head isn't shaped right. You spent 20 years to prove that it is. I am totally un doing a bad job at quoting her. Mm -hmm. she says, somebody says, you have no history. You, you, you dig up all your history to prove that you mm -hmm. have a history. And she's like, it's a distraction. You've been kept from doing your work. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, without all these distractions, where would our imagination be? Who, mm -hmm. would, we, who mm -hmm. would we be? Mm -hmm. And it's also different from like ignoring them or pretending they don't exist or you know, but without having to spend all our energy on that. Yeah. There's a way to like deal with it and move on, but then there's also a way where we are just like... Yeah. Mm. I, I, I strongly think that it's not our strongly. generation. Strongly! <laughs> <laughs> I strongly... <laughs> Yes. believe that it's not our generation that will embody, that will have that embodiment of, of absolute, of that freedom, not even freedom, but of, of the truest identity of the, of consciousness, like uh, the idea of African consciousness in a sense of as a collective, as devoid of color, of, of uh, colonization or, or, or of, um, of being told of who you are, like a purely, and I think it's not in our generation. I feel like our conversation is a similar conversation that um, that they would have in the Negro Truth Movement or even way back during the oral, um, oral uh, sort of uh, um, uh, um, literature that they talked about all this uh, this idea of, uh, of, 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 of how to center ourselves or rather than centering the whiteness as it always been happening. Um, um, the same thing when we're talking about the history. A day where we can talk about the history without talking about what was written about us, but we can talk about the history that we have. But to get to this place, I don't think it's our generation. I think our generation, I have a, I have a, a parable um, that I wrote about this. So it's about um, these farmers who are in a fields of clay, like it's like a clay, broken clay pots that was once looked like a mask. And on this clay field of broken masks mingled with pots, they are, their faces are hollow. They're all bending down trying to fit pieces of who they are. And that, I think, it's, it's where we are at this, at this point. I love how your brain works in images. So, <laughs> so, so, but now, what comes out, it's literally monstrosity because we don't know what that image looked like. It's almost like the palm of your hands, it's my face or the sole of your feet is my ears. 
there is this monstrosity, but this monstrosity is not necessarily in a bad way. I think it's becoming. I have this in Mother, in my essay film, about this child who's wrapped with a, with a wool, and, it, and, and her mother, his mother is it, it's unfolding it, slowly unfolding it. It's unmasking the becoming. From the Negritude movement or from the earlier movements of the oral, where people were just, you know, it was, everything was just oral until now, I think we are trying to define that identity. It's beyond our comprehension to even think about it, but all we can do is that your spine can be my leg. And that's becoming, you know? Is it, isn't that all, all our journeys, the becoming? The return, yes, I think so. I don't know about the return, the becoming, like the unfolding. The, 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 unfolding. the, 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 the return. I, I have this quote that I wrote yesterday. Um, so the Calvinist priest is collecting the bodies of the English soldiers into the wagon. This is based on Lesotho uh, when we defeated the English, right? The Calvinist priest is taking the bodies, putting them into the wagon. And then he talks about how much uh, they are the last ones to resist Christianity. But few, but now many have become, have, have become uh, Christians. And the chief, the chief of the village says to him, whether with your ways or your tongue, we shall return. When I was in Lesotho, I went to church, and I look at people, how they were clapping, and I'm like, it sounds like a, 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 a sort of a, okay, now a, a ritual. Now, now I <laughs> it's hear It's similar you. to actually drum and, going, and doing exactly how they were doing before the Christianity came. It's almost like okay. there's a, a return. In one way or another, there's a, we are returning. I think that's, that, 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 that's, that's yeah. what I mean, yeah. I think the person who's helping me hear you well is Nehandan Kasigana. Because mm -hmm. she, she said, my bones will rise again. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's super beautiful. You should look into her. My she is amazing. It's she's one of the three people that started the Chimaranga Wars. <laughs> she's, she's absolutely incredible. And they couldn't kill her. They had to like, they, they tried hanging her a couple of times and then they had to take the pouch out before they, it's, you should. And then there was like these wars and underground and gorilla the and Send you the should. Book. I'm very curious about it. I'll send you the name. You're gonna yeah, have to do no. some, you can't, you'd have to go to Zimbabwe to get a book. Beyond trauma, beyond, the suffering beyond um, the return of the source. It's not necessarily living in a physical state. Mm -hmm. It's the what we're talking about. The idea of uh, of of when I was thinking about the shepherds who just walk outside and their eyes are still closed. Um, and how, when you look at Manzo, by, uh, who was a, a, a prophetess? Mm -hmm. She was a prophet. Anyway, um, and how she saw her vision, how she saw the visions of a lot of calamities, or a lot of things that happened, especially in the South and Africa. Um, to return to that source, to return to our truest identity. So for me, unfolding is almost like it's continuing. When we're outside, we're talking about the language, how we should somehow find a way of using words. Someone says, uh, it was talking about me and I heard this, it says, refer to me as a cis man. And I, I understand these new words that we use now, but I feel like we are still using the same language that devoid of a character, devoid of the person. But once I'm just a cis man, if you don't know me, then you don't know who I am, where I come from, what is my history. We use the same words to liberate ourselves, but yet they confine us. They, uh, it's almost like a vicious cycle. And I feel like this thing of unfolding, it's almost like let's watch it unfold. You know what I mean? For me, I feel like the idea of the return to to the source I'm talking about, I guess maybe to, to, to nature, 
I mean, it sounds a bit primitive in a way, but or even more, even too corny and spiritual. But I like the idea of of looking at the at the at the at the at the at the, at the, at the idea of the Asian future, the idea of of. I'm gonna quote Nietzsche. So um, Nietzsche. Why is this of Nietzsche? Actually, where he talks about this uh, this idea of the eternal occurrence. That the idea of 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 the Ubermensch, for instance. I relate with the idea of the Ubermensch because I feel like this is where personally I I strive to create the work that can present that image or give a glimpse of the image of what we can become as human beings, as people. The idea of, if you look at the uh, resurrection, my last film, and I was talking about a lot about nature and a lot about uh, a tradition and a lot about uh, what can become, what we can become to return to the earth or the soil where our umbilical cords, our placentas are buried in, our dead body, our ancestors' bodies are buried in. This sort of return, it's almost like reconciliation with, with the source, reconciliation with the nature itself. I'm not saying people should leave their house and go back to the and live like a hermit in the nature. No, I'm talking about like this reconciliation with the spiritual world because I feel that our generation now it's almost like facing almost like a there are two things: a spiritual bankruptcy, but also there is more to that. It's not just spiritual bankruptcy, but also there is also now uh, this this reconciliation. With, with the spirituality, our spirituality, things that centers us. Do, do you get my drift, what I'm talking about, about the idea of a return? Mm, I, I think I do. Um, for example, I don't know if we're talking about the same thing, cause also, or maybe we are from different spaces because in my understanding of what you're saying with the return is that it requires the going away like returning to where your umbilical cord was was buried it's like the journey away Mm -hmm. makes the return worthwhile so then the the journey away doesn't necessarily become a bad thing it just becomes that which is, Mm -hmm. has happened, and helps you Mm -hmm. to go back. Yeah. And also, it's it's almost like a very much of a... a, a This paradigm shift that happens, it's it's very psychological and almost, and also very spiritual. It's not necessarily physical. Um, when When I used to create, I used to because I studied so much languages of, of cinema or, 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 the, or especially European language because I had to dive into world cinema. And, um, and, and, and my tongue or the way I see things start to be based on, 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 on this, on this, uh, I, on this uh, almost like European language. Like the way I saw things was pretty much from the eyes of uh, of, of the of the of the of the um, of the from the point of view of the European language, and and with time, I think with my after my short films, I started to to think and see things in my mother tongue. And Mambeti, Gabriel Diop has such a beautiful line. He says, "We must start to see." He was talking about like African cinema. So he was that he was saying that what defines us is that one or what we can strive for is to see with our ears and hear with our eyes. And that's the language. And I was thinking, and then I started to see things and started to dream in my mother tongue when I write, for instance. And this for me was the return. It's in the becoming. It's not necessarily I'm there yet, but it's this idea of going back. Yeah. 
and to 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 to, to the embryo state again to the uh, primordial. The becoming for me is the unfolding and the this idea of of understanding that you don't see and that that which you don't you cannot know what what you don't see you know like the space beyond and sometimes like seeing seeing with your ears and hearing with your eyes has has a bit for me like when you come into the space and you understand that because sometimes people don't know the space and they come in and they're like there's something I'm not understanding mm-hmm. and that's that's that mm-hmm. like knowing that knowing that you don't know mm-hmm. and finding comfort in the discomfort mm-hmm. of not mm-hmm. of not knowing mm-hmm. that's kind of i think that's also where what we're talking about in in a in a broader sense cuz for me that's interesting yeah and one of the thing that osman said um he said that we are walking um with contradictions as far as trying to create um artworks that are like for people that look like us and 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 creating with the infrastructure that we build ourselves but of course we need to have funds or exhibitions in Europe so it's like walking contradictions and i don't find this contradiction as something as a way of life but also as something we can inspire something it's not the formula to 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 stay in it and i feel like the idea of of unfolding is very ambiguous also that it's like this contradictions of does it continue or does it or do we rewrite it do we write rewrite the new narrative and bring the new narrative like with <clears throat> having now the history of our own as we see it and that's what's pretty much happening now with this uh, wave of new artists who are whether it's architects or whether it's uh, painters or 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 or, or, or just you uh, know performing in a performing in a performing art space or video installation or filmmaker that there's almost like there's this new generation for the last 20 years who are rewriting the narrative so i like also the idea of unfolding because it's almost like now unfolding but it's a different chapter of our own um from our own eyes from our own gaze now the savage man along the side of the congo river we know what he's actually looking at or we see or we hear what he's actually talking about you know oh you see or you hear this or the story is being told from his perspective absolutely yeah 